Barbara, Babs, where may you be? Where are you? Right here. Oh, yes. How can we forget? I'm the only girl representing tonight, is that right? Well, I have to say something. Everybody's talking about the band, and of course the band was kick ass and was formative in my teenage years and even further. But I have to say, I was 17 years old. I'd been in Richmond for 24 hours off the rough streets of Virginia Beach. Yeah, I was tough. Hi, Brian. I'm everywhere. <laughs> and anyways, I was at a party, and I see this guy with no shirt on and a kilt. Yeah. And I said, God damn, who was that? And that's what girls, that was their response. Besides all the amazing things, everything amazing about him, Dave had this physicality that was out of this world, besides his genius. So I just had to address that, because none of these boys are talking about it. Am I right, girls? I know there's been some fights over him, but I was never involved in them. I just want to say that. So anyways, I am here, of course, Oh my god, wait. Shit, you guys have gotten old. <laughs> That's motorhead, bitches. Anyhow, well, I am here as an envoy for my ex boyfriend, who, as it turns out, I met on the Gore tour bus. Hmm. And Dave introduced us, is what we seem to recall. So I have a message from Jello Biafra. Yeah, somebody, yeah, so anyways, I'll do my best, pretend like, uh, you know, this is his voice, and he, <laughs> I have to honor him, I, I, you know, he's, a, he's amazing, and he's done amazing things, so anyways, he wrote this for Dave, and he wished he could be here, and he couldn't, so anyways, um, this is from Biafra. I had to make a vow to myself right away to not let this terrible tragedy take away from the joy from all things war. And the wild memories and adventures from allowing myself to get mixed up with Dave and the entire Slave Pit family. Dave with that wide-eyed Cheshire cat of his, Cheshire grin of his, showing me the early Slave Pit like a kid in a candy store like the evil, demented child who just run off with the keys to Frankenstein's lab. I know full well Gore isn't just Dave, and never was. But one of the things I've always admired about Gore is not just how all these warp geniuses, Dave, Don, Hunter, Chuck, Dirks, Bishop, Danielle, and more, somehow found each other in Richmond of all places. He and Biafra clearly didn't get it. <laughs> um, but that all these gifted, headstrong people were able to come together and work with each other to actually execute all these insane ideas. Is there like balls over my head now? Because <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. Anyhow. <laughs> Believe me, I know how it is to keep a four or five member band in one piece, but 10, 12, 15, give yourselves credit, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We all know people with brilliant off-the-wall ideas, but it's hard enough to make them work in a script or a comic book. I need my damn glasses. Probably more vodka. Hmm. <laughs> Let alone in front of an audience with nothing but an underground budget. The concepts, the latex, those charmingly hideous costumes, finding a way to shower me with jism and fake blood, using hoses attached to pumps hidden behind the band. Brilliant. Did I do a good Biafra imitation? Brilliant. 
especially when Gore was unknown, playing in very small clubs for very little money, trying to somehow keep everyone fed. And here the band keeps going, and the ideas keep flowing. For what, almost 30 years? Well, I choose to think 10, you know. <laughs> Jeez, no, 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 say that ain't so. That makes me super old. And still finding ways to assault innocent young minds with the most magnificently and calculatedly offensive the world has ever seen and get away with it. Bravo, hats off. What kind of ringmaster can motivate people to help come up with this stuff and join in on making it happen year after year? The key constant in war all these years was, of course, Dave. He can never be replaced. I will always miss him, and I will always love him. Um, I was first subjected to Gore by Kramer. That early video became my favorite show and tell toy for the next two or three years. Oh, what fun it was to pop it in so I could watch people watch Gore, having no idea what was about to happen. Soon I was cast in the show, or was I abducted? Smacked in the face with a goblet and blood bag when I offered Gore a record contract and a roll of toilet paper? The blood ran behind my contact lenses and stuck like hell. The screams were real. <laughs> uh, seeing Winston get thrown in the meat grinder. Winston Smith, you guys know him? Yeah. Then getting thrown in, my, thrown in myself when I came on stage at the ward field, claiming I was Bill Graham. And Joe Rivers trying to keep his straight face as odorous tells her gore is just trying to give America what it wants. <laughs> Or the time in New York when Casey and Pete, Lord, <laughs> crashed an opening party for gear in full costume, and the uptight, miserable owner fled his own party just to get away from them. I remember that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I remember some after parties in New York, too, vaguely. Do you? No, yes. And Rog, remember them playing in Brooklyn as Rog? Like, tsh, vague memory. I think it's because I'm old, that's all. Not because I'm bad. Alzheimer's! Yes. Um, <laughs> and pulling that fish with the lit, ci lit cigarette out of Lacey Peterson was bad enough. <laughs> then came this inc incredibly hideous green baby, and I damn near fell on the floor. So sick, so great, and so gore. A developmentally disabled Toltec fetish gone horribly wrong that turned out to be a piece of green foam Dave said he carved one day in 15 minutes. <sighs> I'm honored to this day that Gore chose to cast me, not me, obviously, as his boss clomb and skull head face. Again, the screams, screams were real as I tore off my face that took eight hours to apply, to apply while one of those hoses was ramming French dressing mixed with cottage cheese up my nose so I thought my sinuses were going to explode. That sounds like good times. I actually have the um, cement thing that they made for his face as a welcome to my house. <laughs> By then, Gore and the slave pit were family to me. I had come to know there was much more to Dave than the life of the party, who made fun of everything and everyone, that beneath it all was a kind and caring human being, like when he went out of his way to look after my dear friend Donovan, where are you Donovan? When she was badly injured in a car crash. I treasure the times hanging out with Dave and the gang, plotting all sorts of outrageous art crimes, or just talking art, the world, and life in general. Dave told me more than once about wanting to go up to Winston's ranch way back in the woods just to let it go and pick each other's brains. It meant the world to me when Dave and Don and Mike Bishop came to see my new band play in Richmond and told me how much my earlier work had inspired and influenced them. I still have a message from Dave in my phone, as far from odorous as you can get, telling me he loved me and how much I meant to him as a friend. Wow, thanks. Likewise, back at you, buddy. It's still in my phone because he still hadn't called him back. And if you know him, yeah, he never does return phone calls. Anyhow, <laughs> who said yes? Um, he, he had an edit in here. You want me to read or, you know, you want me to read the whole thing? All right. Be What's that? Oh, man, I'm not that clever now. So anyways, <laughs> you look pretty good sitting on your wallet, baby. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm half of who I am because 
to this damn town. So, anyhow. So, for Dave, this will be offer again. I hope you're out there somewhere, busy as always, throwing Abe Lincoln and Jimi Hendrix and that great meat grinder in the sky. And for Gore and the Slave Pit family and the rest of you who don't know me, I love you all. I sure wish I could be there right now. Please take care of yourselves. It's important. From the bowels of the left coast, Jello Biafra. And of course, uh, we saved the best for last. A man we all love, Mr. Michael Goose. 